Well, hello, Stacy. Welcome to Infotech. Hi, Nathan. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. And can you see my screen with my presentation? Yes, it is looking good. Okay, great. No problem. It looks like you are good to go as it is 11 o'clock. Oh, okay. Well, let me get this started here. All right. Can everyone see the screen? Or Nathan, can you see that? All righty. So I would like to thank everyone for joining the session today on leading high performing teams. My name is Stacy Richter and I am an associate director of ITS at Warner Enterprises. And I am looking forward to this conversation today. Uh, I, if you at any point in time have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. I'll try to look at the chat as I'm presenting to make sure that I can answer some questions. And um, I, Nathan, if you can help me with that a little bit as well, that would be great. Um, first, thank you to the Infotech sponsors. It is with their sponsorship that we are able to put this wonderful uh, event on. So uh, thank you to our sponsors. Oops, I think. All right. Can everyone see the agenda? Yeah, looks good. Okay, so I have some topics that I'm going to be covering today. And like I said, I would like this to be very uh, in, integrated with questions. So please let me know. Um, Nathan, is there a way that I can see my presentation and move it through as well as see the chat screen? I'm not able to do both at the moment. Um, I do believe it kind of is one window or the other if you're on one screen. Okay, so um, I, can, I can make sure the chat is looked over. Yeah, if you could just keep me updated on the chat and if there's any additional questions as I'm, I'm rolling through since I won't be able to see the chat, that would be great. Problem. Okay, all right, well, let's get to it. So my main areas of conversation and topics today include leadership, motivation, teamwork, leading in difficult times and some closing thoughts. Now, I think the one thing that we can all agree on is that this is definitely a very difficult time that we're dealing with. And um, so I thought I'd, uh, maybe some additional uh, discussion around how to do that would be very helpful, okay? So let's talk a little bit about leadership. Uh, when we talk about leading high-performing teams, one of the key factors for that is obviously leadership. And when I think of how to start leading those high performing teams, the most important thing is the passion, right? As leaders of high performing teams, we absolutely have to have a passion, a drive to make those teams successful. We, and we also have to have an understanding that leading teams is a privilege. And I think that's one thing that we forget. Leading people to success, leading any group of people toward a common goal, objective, is such a privilege. And as, as the leader of that group, whether you are a leader of a department or whether you are the direct manager for that team, leading that team is a privilege. And I think once we remember that and we think about that leadership is a privilege, I think that helps us excel to what we need to do to help those teams be successful. So obviously knowing that, the first thing in the leadership that I look to is accountability. Right. When we are teaching our teams and leading our teams and helping them be successful, the absolute first thing we need to be aware of is accountability. We as leaders have to lead by example. That's first and foremost. When you are doing those things that you are asking your team to do and they see that, that's much more effective in getting them to push toward that greater performance. When you set expectations and when you give them feedback and you're holding them accountable, that's much more effective and helping them see the events and what's going to be needed for this particular project. So it's really critical that when you talk accountability with your team, when you start talking through a project or a particular sprint, that you talk about what the expectations are. And while you're doing that, you've got to give them the feedback along the way. Also critical is individualization. It's so important that we understand that each person 
bring something completely different to the table. And it is our job to figure out what each of those individual talents and strengths is so that we can help determine how to help them be successful. So we wanna make sure that we understand each of the people on our team and what is their strength? What is that skill set that is their area of expertise? What is it that they do best so we can make sure we're driving them to those particular tasks and project work? And then we want to focus on goals, objectives, and strategies because these are what are going to drive and encourage solutions. So if we're focusing our team, whether it's on a two-week sprint, whether it's a long-term project, as long as we are focusing them on what are the goals and objectives of that work, we can drive and encourage solutions. And when they have that understanding of the goal and objective of the work, they then can contribute to those conversations around solutions. And that gets them all the more accountable for the work that they're doing. The next thing I wanna to touch on is interpersonal courage. Patrick Lencioni, did a podcast on interpersonal courage, which I thought was extremely beneficial. And what, it, what interpersonal courage really is about is being able to speak the truth. It's being able to talk to your teams with, with courage, confronting them when things may not be working as they should, and really pushing through that uncomfortable conversation that you may have to have with them, just in order to get things resolved. We don't ever want a conflict to continue. So part of our leadership charge is having those difficult conversations. It's being able to talk to someone. And that's really a lot of what passion for people is all about. You don't want them to wallow in a problem. You want to talk to them and help them move down that path to success. So that interpersonal courage and being a leader that has the ability not to be a coward and to really have those tough conversations is absolutely critical. So don't feel bad if those conversations have to happen. Don't struggle. I mean, it's, it's, it's always uncomfortable to have difficult conversations, but the reality is we need to make sure that we're having those conversations because we wanna move from point A to point B and resolving conflict is the only and best way to do that. Emotional intelligence. This is something we hear a lot of, right? We have heard and we keep hearing that leaders have to be emotionally intelligent. And really, what does that mean? Emotional intelligence is that ability to show grace and compassion to your people when they have difficulty or when they fail. It's being able not to kick someone when they're down. So as leaders, and in order to encourage our team to continue down the path of productivity and performance, we want to make sure that when there are mistakes, when there are issues, that we are helping to move past them, that we are helping our team to understand where is it that they went wrong? What was that failure? And how can we as leaders help them see what happened and move them forward to greater success? The one thing that is so critical is each and every interaction we have with our team member can make a big difference, especially when they're in an area of conflict. So make sure that you are always offering that positivity, that grace, that empathy, especially in situations where a team member has had um, a failing or a um, issue. Okay. Um, relationships. Anybody that knows me or that's worked with me in the past understands that I am a big relationship person. And I absolutely believe relationships are critical when we are managing and trying to drive our teams to high performance. Everyone knows, and it's been said in all kinds of studies, that a key driver of engagement of employees is that relationship they have with their manager. So it is really critical that we are constantly trying to enable a relationship that is beneficial to both you as a leader and that team member. Never downplay what that impact can mean, that caring and that ability to understand someone and to have a relationship. And don't get me wrong, personal can also be professional. So you can have a relationship with a person on your team. You can know their spouse, their children, what they like to do outside of work. And that can still be very professional while also offering that caring and letting that team member know that you are that I care about you and I want to make sure that I'm able to provide you with that support that you need. And knowing a little bit about that person outside of work is really critical. Everyone does have a life outside of work. And so the fact that we are all here, you know, at work eight to 10 hours a day, the fact that as a leader, we're recognizing 
that within our individual group, that they have a life outside of work and we appreciate the time that they are spending at work is also very critical in establishing that relationship. And the key to establishing relationships is, the, is that your team will follow you. They will follow you to the end. If you've got a good relationship with everyone that you work with on that team, if you have a tight timeline, if you ask for people to go above and beyond, they will go above and beyond because of what you've built with them. So relationship building goes a long way. Doing what you say, that's another big piece of relationships, right? Whether you talk work, personal, doing what you say. So if your team member has an issue and you talk to them about that and you say, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go talk to Stacy and make sure that I can get that resolved for you. I'll get back to you by noon and let you know. Maybe you don't actually have it resolved by noon, but getting back to the person and letting them know that you're working on it is, is really important. So being able to say, here's what I'm gonna do for you, and then executing and completing what you say brings upon a positive relationship that will allow that person, like I said earlier, to follow you to whatever thing that you need. And then the power of partnerships. This is really important. And I think this is something that as leaders, we all need to understand and grasp. So as much as we'd like to think that as a leader, we can do it all, we absolutely cannot. And one of the things that I think a lot about is the power of a partnership. So it's really critical as a leader to understand that I am good at this group of things. I'm not so good at these couple of things. Once we identify what it is that maybe we don't have a strength in, it becomes really critical for us to find a partner that has that strength that we can partner with when we need to pull that out. So for example, if you are not a very good strategic thinker, or you can't vision, you don't have a vision into the future, or you have a hard time, you're more of a tactical type leader, and you're not really, that vision is something that you struggle with. Find that partner that has that. Find that person that when you need some of that extra help in strategic planning or vision that you want to share with your team, work with a colleague that can help you think through what it is you need and can help you. The power of partnerships is exponential and it helps us become a better leader when we know when we have to reach out to others for help. So having said all that with the leadership role, this is what I feel are absolutely critical that we have to do as leaders when we're leading a team. And Nathan, I'm going to pause there to see if there's any questions in the chat that I might be able to answer before I move on to my next topic. Yes, uh, we do actually have a question from Vonda Page. What advice do you have for a new agile coach going into an established team where there are a lot of opportunities for improvement? I think that's a really good question. We are in our own work environment at Werner going through some changes with agile too right now. I think it's, it's openness. It's openness and talking about here's how we work today Here's where we need to go in the future. And how can we as a team work together, given the agile strategies that are ahead of us? How can we work together to get there? You always want to recognize that you understand the challenges the team is facing today, that you understand where they've been, but then together you can move forward to where you need to go. Anything and else, I, Nathan? Yeah. And then I actually had a question. Um, when you're talking about the relationships uh, with coworkers and managers and leaders, um, is it appropriate to connect with coworkers or managers via social media? And how do you feel about that? I think that's a very thin line. And I think you have to be very careful with that. Um, I do have connections in social media with some of the people that I work with, but I also want to make sure that um, I'm very prescriptive in, in, in those and what I put on social media. So I think we all have to do that, right? We're all professional, we all have a brand to us. And social media, as we know, as people that potentially hire new employees, social media can be a big driver in making a determination on whether or not we go forward with someone. So I think it's okay to have that relationship. It's a way for you to kind of see what they're doing, what their families are doing, how they're growing and, and the things that they like to do. Uh, but you've got to be careful in how you interact on social media with them. So I think it's a very fine line, and I think there is a level of professionalism that we can maintain. We just have to be careful. 
you. Sure. All right, let's move on to motivation. So once we've got that leader that is um, leading for our teams, we wanna move on to motivation. And how do you motivate teams? I mean, everybody has their own way of motivation. Everybody thinks that there's a great theory to, to prescribe to, but really the absolute first thing with any type of motivation is trust. You have to have a way that your team trusts you as a leader and they trust each other as team members, that they are going to work together to move forward toward that common goal. And there's a lot that you can do to build trust. There's team building activities. There's openness around conflicts. There's openness around how are we going to set this goal? All of those feed into that trust. And that's what you always want to make sure your teams have. The second your team members lose trust in each other or lose trust in their manager or leader, that's when things start to unravel. So you have to be aware as a leader that trust is absolutely essential for teams when you want them to be high performing and productive. The second is individualization. So I talked a little bit about understanding individually with each person on your team what their skill set is and what their strengths are so that you can manage to that. It's the same with task management. When you're looking at a project or when you're looking um, for a, in a sprint and you see what user stories or what tasks you have for that sprint, it's absolutely critical that you match your team members with the tasks that fit their skill set. And the reason for that, it's like a square peg in a square hole, right? The more that you're able to do that and match the, the people with the right skill set into the right task, the better off and the better they will be to hit that successful uh, piece. And so you always want to do that because that's how you get people on the road to success by individualizing to where their strengths and talents are. Uh, also, motivation is also recognition is important for motivation. And when we think about recognition, everyone has read those studies, right? Employees that are recognized have a higher productivity rate than others. I've seen it as high as 40 percent in some studies. But recognition is absolutely critical because you want to encourage along the way. You don't ever want to get your team to to get to the very end of a project, whether that's a two week or a six month project, and then you finally recognize them for what they've done. Recognition comes in small doses, and it's that recognition that comes iteratively throughout the project that can keep them going. And recognition also has to be individualized. When we think about each person and their skill set, we also have to think about each person and how they want to be recognized. And what I mean by that is some people love being recognized in front of others. They want everyone to hear their great accomplishment. Some people are more reserved where they would prefer a side conversation with that manager, or they would prefer maybe a note that's just private to them. The key is that recognition only means something to that team member if it's how they like to be recognized. So we need to make sure that we're recognizing that. And, and how do we know that? Just ask. You know, it's, it's sometimes people try to think, oh my gosh, I have to go through all these theories and figure out how to motivate and recognize people. Sometimes it's just as simple as asking them, what motivates you? What can I do to help you? How do you like to be recognized? That goes a long way in winning trust from each of your people. Develop solutions together. That is another thing that can greatly enhance the trust a team has and thus move them toward performance. If they are developing the solutions together for any body of work that they're all working on, they're more apt to lock their arms together and move it forward to completion. So make sure that you're offering that level of work and collaboration amongst the team so that they can develop those solutions together, which that leads me into collaborate. Uh, it is important, and I think in IT we do this very well anyway, but we are probably an industry that does a fabulous job of creating an environment for collaboration where activities can flow, where ideas can flow, where teams can band together to talk through different opinions and different ideas so they can arrive at that solution that they're gonna lock their arms together around and, and persevere and perform to meet. So make sure that you're um, offering that collaborative environment because that is also very motivational to a team when they're working together. Stacy, we yes, do have sir. a few questions that are regarding uh, this specific topic. Um, the first one is how do you approach leadership and motivate 
engagement on a distributed team in multiple time zones and countries. So that is quite a challenge, um, especially with more offshore teams that we are partnering with. Um, the key is to have what, like in, in our environment at Warner, we have daily standups for our, our, our sprints. And the key is to have that stand up when everyone can be involved. So if you have a team that only works till nine or 10 in the morning, you better have your stand up very early because being together, reviewing action items together, status updates, projects, all being on a call together is part of what's needed to motivate that team and to have that trust as a team. So you've got to adjust and you've got to have times when the team can meet and all be together. Now, if that's later in the evening, sometimes we have to make exceptions. And I think as long as the team realizes that the times that we have to meet are for the betterment of what we can do together, I think they'll embrace it as long as it's a, a team event and a time where the team can be together. Um, I'd also like to add that whatever you do with your team that you're with, and I know that's, we're not really with our teams right now, right? We're all remote. But whatever you do, whatever programs you have for motivation, for recognition that you do with your teams um, right around you, make sure you're doing that with your teams that are offshore and in other distributed environments because you want to make sure that everybody understands that you all work together regardless of where you are and that that recognition and the expectations are the same regardless of where you are. And it's, and it's important that we all realize that and hold tight to that together. And I do want to let you get through the rest of your slide, but we do have okay. two other questions. Um, what is the best leadership advice you received that you still use today? Oh my gosh. Um, I would say the best leadership I got, advice I've ever had is do what you say, listen. And listen means really listen. Um, and I talk a little bit, I've got that on the slide in a little bit about uh, the power of listening. And while, as in, I'm a parent, so you know this happens in our personal life as well, but you absolutely have to be able to listen. And if you don't hear what your employees are saying and your team members are telling you, you cannot act on it. And if you can't act on it and make it better, you can't move them to that level of performance they deserve. So you absolutely have to listen. You have to do what you say. You have to be an authentic leader. You can't say, or ask your team to do things that you would not do yourself. And that is my definition of an authentic leader, somebody that absolutely is there and will do with you what they want you to do. And, and there's a lot of examples I have where I think that's been very beneficial for projects in the past. Things like, okay, everybody, we're gonna work this weekend because we need to get this timeline met. Okay, I may not be coding in the trenches with the team, but I show up on the weekend and I'm right there next to them in their pods, working with them and making sure that they know that I'm there to support them. So that's really kind of my key leadership things that I think about all the time. Am I doing what I'm saying? Am I being an authentic leader? Am I listening? And am I providing an environment that allows people to, to grow, to learn and to perform? Actually leads into the other question. Uh, when you have had interpersonal courage with your employees, how have they reacted? You know, it, it depends what the situation is. I think in the situations where I've had to have these difficult conversations, it's been a, a relief. I think when you talk to someone about an issue, they kind of know the issue is there. But the fact that you're reaching out and you're addressing it because you want them to be better and you are there to help them succeed, they appreciate it. Uh, the level of how you say it is what's important. You can say it with compassion, you can say it with care, and you can say it with, I am in this to help you succeed, but you've got to understand some things that are going on and you've got to make some changes. I think it's appreciated because nobody wants to feel like they're not doing well in their job. And as leaders, we are here to make sure that they do well in their job. Questions for now? Okay. Um, I will just tie up these last few things in motivation here. Um, hold accountable and insist on results. There is nothing that will kill team motivation faster 
then if you are holding some people on the team accountable to their timelines and expectations, but you're not doing that with others. So you have to be consistent there. Everyone has to feel and understand that what is agreed upon and what is timelines have been set for the team are set for all and together everyone has to meet those goals and expectations. Find your personal motivation and share it with others. This I think is really important and I think this goes a long way with team trust as well as team motivation because if you have a personal goal that particular sprint let's say for example it's the first time you're coding in .NET Core or you're doing Azure uh, cloud development uh, anything that is new to you or any goal that you have for that sprint, sharing that with your team shows them that not only am I committed to meeting the goals of our team this sprint or this period, but I have a personal goal that I want to share with you because if I can reach in that too, that's helping me become a better team member, a better employee. So I think if you can find and share personal motivations and have your team do that, that goes a long way with team members coming together, helping each other and motivating each other toward the end goal. And then of course, celebrate wins. And the big thing about celebrating and recognition is it has to be meaningful and it has to be meaningful to the team. So teams may like very different kinds of recognition. I've worked with so many teams throughout my career, and I've had the privilege of all kinds of different teams that I've got to work with. But when we are ready to celebrate and we are ready to, to celebrate a win, it has to be meaningful to, to the team. That might be a lunch. It might be a happy hour. It might be going to the Mark and Elkhorn and playing laser tag and bowling. Um, whatever it is, the bottom line is you need to find out what is meaningful to your team. And when you're ready to celebrate, make sure it's meaningful for them. We have a really good question uh, to end the segment. Um, sure. how, do you, how do you align your motivations with priorities from your leadership? And how do you, sorry, I'll just start that over. Uh, how do you align your motivations with priorities from your leadership? And how do you then help your team align their motivations in line? That's a great question. I think first and foremost, we have to understand what the goals are of not just our IT department, but for our corporation, right? We have to understand what is the goals that have been set before us. Then if you can break those down into the projects that you're working on and how those link back to not only a department goal, but maybe an overall corporate goal. I think that is the motivation that you need. Um, I always give the example of when I managed our back office accounting team. It's not real sexy, right? You know, doing bills, making sure that bills go out the door, not real sexy. But it is when you tell the teams that they're responsible for a million dollars a week that go out to this one customer that you know comes back in the door as revenue for our company. So you have to find that piece of motivation that will help the team understand that maybe I'm not creating sexy software, but what I'm doing is absolutely critical to the success of my department and the success of my company. All right, I'm gonna move on to teamwork. Uh, now, what, probably what you've noticed if there's been some similar themes throughout my leadership and my motivation and there's gonna be some similar themes here with teamwork as well. My favorite quote about a team is from Simon Sinek, and it's a team is not a group of people that work together, a team is a group of people that trust each other. So trust was my first point when we talked about motivation, and that carries into teamwork, right? If you've built that trust in your team early on, you will have a teamwork that, you will have a team that is very successful in locking their arms and, and successfully driving to those results that you need for that particular project. Key to teamwork is collaboration. And we've talked already about how important a collaborative environment is, trusting and respecting each other and realizing that we're more valuable together than apart. So when you think back to what I stated earlier about understanding that each person has a place, each person has something of value that they bring to that team. And then together, the combination of all of that together is what is going to move us forward. So it's very much important that we let our teams understand that we are more valuable together than we are apart. And then ultimately together we succeed. 
because we have that strength amongst all of us to do what we need to do for the project or for that particular sprint. Support and trust. We all have something of value to contribute. And again, this goes this is a long way when each person understands their value. And as a leader, I think it's important that we are constantly sharing that with our team, that we understand what each of them brings to the table and how together we can, we can move the project forward and we can get to that end goal. Share and celebrate wins. Every team likes to celebrate. We talked a little bit about that already. This is a good one. Attack issues, not each other. No drama. I think sometimes we get caught up in the fact that when there are issues or concerns, that people tend to think of it as a personal attack. And that's where as leaders, we have to make sure that they understand, don't take it personally. Look at the issue that's at hand, not the person that's bringing the issue to the table. Look at the issue itself and then work together to find that solution. We want to attack the issue and find a solution, not attack the person that only tears the team down. We are all here to win. We are not here to ruin your day. I think if we just think about that and we just help our teams think about it, nobody gets up in the morning and says, when I get to work, I'm going to ruin Stacy's day. I'm going to make her life miserable today. Nobody does that. Nobody means to do that. So when you feel like somebody is challenging you or preventing you from your success, talk to them about it. Find out what's going on. It could be something as simple as a misunderstanding. It could be something as simple as I'm having a really rotten day and I'm really sorry if I took it out on you. But don't let that fester. Just understand that everyone is here to do a job and to be successful. Don't judge. Listen and help each other. I think what's really critical there is that listen part. And I've talked a little bit about that as one of my leadership uh, uh, things that I do all the time. And that's listen. And don't judge others. Everybody should bring their opinions, their solutions, their ideas to the table. And we should all listen objectively and then come together as a team to determine the correct solution for what's facing us. I know this one's kind of corny, one for all, all for one. We win as a team, but it's true, right? And I think sometimes just a little reminder of that simple philosophy is really important. And putting egos aside. We all are very strong workers, right? We all have um, goals that we have. Every piece of work we do has our name on it. So we feel very proud in what we're doing and that's okay. But when you have to solve something, put your ego aside. Solve it with the team in mind that together you will find the solution. Set an outcome, a path and own it. We talked a little bit about that when we talked about motivation. If the solution and the project and the resolution to issues that come up or impediments that, that get in our way. If we find those solutions together and we own it, it's a better path toward teamwork and a better path toward success. Help each other see how far you've come. This is one thing I think we don't do enough of, right? We're always looking at the work that's not done yet, but have we really celebrated the work that we did do? That goes a long way with motivation and with the team being able to see the successes that they have to date. And then listen, again, I know I've had listen on here a few times, I've had collaborate on here a few times, trust, but those are all very key to the ultimate goal, which is driving that team to high performance, driving that team to productivity so that we can all get the work done that needs to be done. Any questions before we lead into the last topic? Nathan, anything in the chat? Uh, nothing so far. Okay, great. So when I was thinking about this presentation, um, I thought it would be very important to put a slide in here about leading in difficult times because what we are all facing as leaders and managers and team members is unprecedented, right? If you would have told me a year ago that I would spend beginning in March a period of time where I was leading my team remotely, I would be like, what? what are you talking about? You mean my offshore team? Uh, so I thought it would be good to talk through some things that I've really tried to do in the last nine months. Now at Werner, um, the management staff has been in the office. However, our teams, we have allowed them to work remotely if that's the best situation for them. So while the management group is in the office, uh, the team has been home 
or remote, or some have just have chose to come into our office, but we've got people everywhere. So one of the things that I think is critical, regardless of the time that you are leading in, is focusing on accomplishments, outcomes, and goals. So when you think about how you manage teams today, that's how we, what we do, right? We focus on what is the outcome? What do we need to do? And we keep driving our team toward what that is. And that's what we have to continue to do that even with our remote workforce. Don't think that just because people are remote, we have to micromanage. Continue to lead your teams based on their performance. Here's a good one, planning something spontaneous, some spontaneous interactions. You know, when you're in an office and you've got teams that are just right outside your office door and you can walk out and talk to them and get them going and kind of start talking about different uh, topics, that's easy to do, but it's not easy to do when they're remote. So I have planning quotes there because how do you plan something spontaneous? That's kind of like an oxymoron. But really, maybe it's about just planning a quick Zoom or a quick you know, Teams meeting and just having people talk through what, what they're up to and what are they thinking about and what's happening with them this week that they haven't maybe been able to share in a stand-up. So sometimes just those, those spontaneous things. Um, create opportunities for personal interactions. One thing we've done a lot of is when we first started remote work, we had once a week lunches. So we set up a Zoom meeting and if the team wanted to eat their lunch together, kind of like they would do in the office if, we, if they were there, we did that. So people would bring their lunch. Uh, we did the same thing a few times with kind of a um, happy hour after work where we set up a Zoom call and then people could log in and we just had that opportunity for that fun, casual conversation that would have normally occurred within our pod and our workstation environment, but was not occurring because we were remote. This is a big one. And this is, I think, that's been, as a leader and as a manager, what's been challenging is consider differences between in-person communication and email communication. And I think what's important here is when you are in person with someone, you can read their body language. You can see the expression on their face. You can see their facial cues. Are they smiling? Are they happy? Or are they frowning? You can't get that out of an email. And I think sometimes what's been happening is that emails tend to be overanalyzed and people read way too much into an email. Or there's a lot of misunderstandings that can come as a result of maybe not being on an email. So I think it's really important that we help our teams understand, oh, I'm sure he meant to put you on that email, he just forgot. No worries, let's get you back involved in the conversation. So I think we have to be very cognizant to the fact that it's very important that we somehow encourage that. When we have Zoom calls, I encourage my team to turn their video on. I don't care if you didn't take a shower that day. I don't care if, if you didn't put makeup on in the morning or you, you just feel like you're not really up to par. Seeing a person is much different than just hearing their voice. So um, I think that's really important to remember. Um, and then lastly, be present. We talk a lot about how are you present for your employees and how do you help them, but be present for them, especially at this time. Acknowledge that you understand they might be having a difficult time, especially those people that have children in school. It's been a very difficult juggle for them to work and also get their kids on the right track for their learning, especially when their kids are home. Understand that you know that things may be difficult and what can I do to help you? What can I do to make sure that you have the tools that you need to succeed? And again, there's that listen. Really listen and determine what they need because we may not be able to tell and we have to be able to ask so we do know. Nathan, anything in the chat? So far, so good. Okay. Well, I'm going to close with some thoughts and then I'm going to click out of my presentation so I can see the chat and maybe see some additional questions. But when I think about leading high performing teams, we've talked a lot about leadership and what we can do as leaders and managers to ensure that we're moving our team in the direction. We've talked about how to motivate them, how to encourage teamwork, how to ensure that we are that we are working toward that team environment so that they can lock their arms together and they can move not only toward that individual success, but that team success. Because exponentially, a group of people succeeding together gets more done than just a lot of individuals. So when I think about the whole concept of leading high-performing teams, my first thing I think about is owning responsibilities. 
not just from a leadership perspective, but a team member perspective. Each member of that team has to own their responsibilities. And as a manager, I have to own my responsibility of making that team successful. Build relationships. I, I talked about this right off the bat. There is nothing more critical to helping people succeed than building that relationship with them. If they trust you and they know that you believe in them and you support them and you will work and do what you need to do to help them succeed, they will give you more than you think they ever would. Listen to others and respect opinions. Again, there's that listen. I can't say it enough because it's oh so critical. And then respect the opinions that you hear. You may not be able to act on every idea, every concern that your team members may have, but just listening to them and acknowledging that you, that you heard them is very, very critical and very important to their well-being. Celebrate successes. Recognize individuality. And what I mean by that is recognize people the way they want to be recognized. So make sure that you're individually celebrating and recognizing your team members. And then you're also doing that as a team. So recognizing individual accomplishments as well as team accomplishments. No drama in common goals. If everyone is working toward the same goal, I'm not saying that they can't have personal goals for a particular amount of time, but if they're working toward a common goal, you get more out of them and they see that and they'll work together to achieve it. And then always communicate. We talk a lot about how important communication is. And just like listening, it's probably ranks up there with one of the most important things you can do as a manager, as a leader, as a team member. You've got to ensure that the lines of communication between you and your team, between your team members, between you and your executive leadership are open and that everyone understands what is happening and what the goals are for that particular group. Um, I had a question for you, Stacy. Sure. Um, how important or is it important um, to individually recognize your leader and or manager as a team member? I, I believe it is. I think that, um, you know, we talk a lot about servant leadership and we're here to be the leader for our groups. But I think that also goes a long way to let our team members know that, that uh, hey, you, hey, manager, we appreciate what you did. We really appreciate that you have our back. We appreciate that you said you were going to fix that impediment and you did. We appreciate that what you say you do, you do. So I do think it is important. And I do think it is important that that uh, recognition goes both ways, right? From a manager to a team and from a team to a manager. And you have to have an environment that encourages that. You have to have an environment that lets them know that that is okay and it's well received. Add to that, are there certain ways that you've personally uh, been able to convey that message to your team members? Um, the message of recognition? Yes. Is that Nathan? Okay, just want to make sure I understood the question. Um, I just think it's it's honesty, right? You have to talk about when you start a project or you start a sprint, you have to talk about what the, those goals are. You want to make sure that the team is well aware of those goals. And so, and that may include, let's make sure that we can talk to each other about what's going well about the things that are challenging to us so we can overcome them. So recognition is something that we talk a lot about. And when are we gonna celebrate? That's another thing we bring up. When we start a project and we start thinking through all the steps and iterations and what it might take to, for the completion of that project, it's really important that we kind of pinpoint some milestones that when we hit certain things along the way that we'll take the time to celebrate with each other. Those are some great points. Um, and thank you for answering that question. We do have uh, another question from Sterling. Are leaders, leaders see that work from home model is producing higher volume of completing deliverables? And will this full time work from home be the norm in 2021? Well, I think that's a good question. And I think that's what companies are struggling with right now. You know, what does this mean? What does this look like in our future? Um, I know that at Warner, we are working to redesign our IT space so that when we welcome our teams back, 
they're coming back into an incredible new environment that allows for collaborative space and chairs and all kinds of nice things to bring them back. I think that uh, we have done a good job of ensuring our teams remain productive. And I know that that's a challenge that probably a lot of leaders have had. But um, I think that we are trying to get to that point where it may look different. You know, maybe there will be some people that will permanently work from home, but there may also be uh, room for a different kind of environment once we do all get back together. So I, I think that, in, you know, personally, my teams, I have seen productivity continue throughout this pandemic. Um, I, I don't know if I've seen a higher volume, but I know that when, when milestones and deadlines have been set, they've been met. So that's my measure, right? Performance is always my measure. Um, but I do think that things will look different. How companies choose to define that in, in 2021 will be dependent upon that company. And Nancy Goodell would like to know if Warner is hiring right now. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, yes, um, I would go to our warner.com website and take a look at positions that are available and uh, it will guide you on the application process. All right, and it looks like those are the questions I'm seeing for now. Well, I want to thank everyone who attended. I hope you were able to get some nuggets that can help you with the leadership of your teams. And um, I do think I have a card uh, in uh, the session or within hop in. So if anyone has any additional questions or would like to reach out, uh, please feel free to do so. I'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, and thank you, Stacy, for your time today and the, all the great information that you provided, uh, which will be sent via email at the end of today's event. Um, I just put in the session survey link, so if you can uh, please fill that out to give us some feedback today on today's session, uh, it would be greatly appreciated. Other than that, um, thank you very much again, Stacy, and enjoy the rest of InfoTech, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.